Hi, I'm Edwina Rogers, Executive Director with the Secular Coalition for America, and we are the national group that works to unify and facilitate coordination within the secular movement. And we have a mission to increase the visibility of all the non-theist groups in America and to work for separation of church and state. And I spend a lot of time training our 50 state chapters. And I'm here today to work with our Secular Coalition for California chapter and train them on lobbying, fundraising, communications, and how to put together a coalition. The first document I want to go over is basically an overview document here. It has a picture of the dome of the Capitol on it. So try to get that in front of you. And this overview document explains to you about the Secular Coalition for America. Because remember, Secular Coalition for California, or Secular Coalition for Baltimore, or Secular Coalition for Nevada. They're all part of Secular Coalition for America. So the biggest thing to remember is that we are you, and you are us, and it's not really that separate because it's the uh, chapter type of model. So there's not a separate bank account. There's not a separate legal status. They're, they're one and the same. And uh, so if you look right on the inside cover, you can see our national member organization groups. There are 11. So we're particularly interested in identifying all types of groups that are non-theist groups. And we do know that there are about 1,800 in the United States. A lot of them are just meetup groups or local groups. But these are most of the major national groups that sit on our board. And our structure is pretty much that we are trying to include as member groups all non-theist groups and as non-voting member groups any other type of group that wants to be friends or allies with us because remember we're a coalition and the bigger you are, the more important you are, the more reach you have, the better off you're going to be in getting your mission done. Now, what is our mission? We have a two-part mission. We're trying to raise the visibility and the respect for the non-theistic viewpoint. And of course, we're working for separation of church and state. So that's basically our mission. If any group can agree and sign on to that mission, then they should be a core member group. And at the national level, but the state level is identical. So when you're setting up a state chapter, like for example, the Secular Coalition for California, the first thing we need to do, and we already have a directory, we have a list, as a matter of fact, Michael Lewis in Los Angeles has already put together a list of all the secular groups in California. So every secular group, every non-theistic group in California, I know that they've identified approximately about 200 of them in California. They should all be contacted and they should all be participating groups. And sometimes you don't want to use the term member because the group might say, well, that sounds a little too formal and maybe we need all kinds of votes and documents and approval. So you just talk to them about being a participating group. And on the Secular Coalition for California's website and every other state's website, Right up front on the home page, there is a section, an area where participating groups can sign up and be listed as participating groups. So we have the contact information, we have the name of the group, we have their zip code, and we have a contact person. So we're going to ask them to participate because it's a coalition. So we're particularly interested in the groups. And, but we're also interested in individuals. So on the website, like on our website, there's a place for groups to sign up as endorsing groups, and there's a place for individuals to sign up to get into the database. Now, moving on to the next page here, we have a list of the court policy issues that we lobby on, that we focus on. Health and safety, education, military, tax policy, discrimination, government actions, international. So you think about this big diverse community, the secular community, the non-theist community, and think about how different the humanists might be from ethical union or how different uh, um, atheist groups might be from the free thought groups. So at the national area, we've been able to lay everybody's policy issues and concerns on the table and draw a circle around the ones where we could get consensus. So there will be some issues that perhaps humanist groups care about and that they're working on lobbying on that you won't see listed here. For example, so these are the ones where the majority of the groups in the movement were able to agree on. Uh, so these are the ones that we try to focus on. And if you look down the next page here, you can see some of the things that we do. Now, if we're doing them, you're doing them, 
it's all one and the same. So we're the voice on Capitol Hill. There are federal issues that affect every state. So of course we uh, go into the states to ask uh, people who live in the state of California, or whatever the state might be, to help us with a national issue in the House or the Senate. We have purchased the legislative regulatory tracking at the federal level in all 50 states. That costs about $65,000 a year. We have the state chapters in 50 states, all at different degrees of maturity. Some are very mature and, and very quite independent, and others, you know, a phone call happens when we do it. We can do action alerts on any issue that we want to in any zip code or statewide or nationwide. And a lot of uh, states were already sending out action alerts that are coming from the co-chairs in that particular state. We could set it up that way coming from their names. And uh, then moving on to the list here, advocacy and education. We do a national summit, <coughs> policy summit and lobby day. We can do these at the state level. We can do a lobby day at the state level. We do uh, training like we're doing uh, here today. Uh, summits and movement phone calls. You'll hear more about the, the movement phone call, which is very important. We do a national movement phone call every Thursday at noon, East Coast time, 9 o'clock your time in California. It's every week. Well, it needs to be every week for you know, for the whole movement and for national issues. But the state, it doesn't need to be every week. It can be uh, once a month. It can be once a month when the legislature is in session. Uh, you could take the month of August off. You could take the summer off. You could be once a week if there are a lot of really hot issues happening. The states need to decide the frequency of their call. But we have to do the phone calls and put together an agenda because that makes things happen. We do research. We do scorecards. This year, it's a light year. We're only doing Virginia and New Jersey. There are only two states that have elections this year. But next year, there will be a lot of states with a lot of elections. And we'll be going back to our state chapters. We have the predetermined questions. We have the system in place to do kind of automatic scorecards. It can't, they can't be biased. Uh, they have to be objective. But we do loop in the state uh, people and officials when we do the scorecards. Keeping you up to date. So I mentioned our weekly movement calls with an agenda. It goes on for 30 minutes. We have morning read, morning clips, that if you go to our website and you sign up in our website to be in our database, it doesn't cost anything. And as you meet people, encourage them to, they get a preference list. You can get our daily clips, about five to seven, 10 most important articles secular leaders need to know. You can get the weekly wrap up, which is short executive summary on Friday. You can also get this long Thursday call agenda, action alerts, and then anything else. But you can pick and choose. And in any email we send out, this is true at the state level too, there's a preference at the bottom. And any user can go in there and click on the preference and go in and update. And they can opt out of the state. They can, they can pick any one of the 50 states that they want or 10 of the 50 states, or they can opt out. And they, some people say, I only want to be involved in federal issues. I don't want to be involved in any state issues. So all of that is in there now. And that took a lot of money and many months. And without that, you know, people are really expecting that type of choice now with the emails that are coming into their inbox. So we do have those features. And they can click and opt out of the database completely, or they can stay in just for just the Friday wrap up and nothing from the states. And that's why the zip code is so important. We just can't, if we get people in there without the zip code, then we could never get them into their state materials. We also have a really nice website. It's called Secular Daily News. And that website is for the whole movement. And uh, it gets about 20,000 hits a month right now. It's going to be getting a lot more because we're going to be promoting it more. It was given to us as a gift. It was a for-profit website with advertisers uh, with a gentleman up in Oregon. And he gave it to the Secular Coalition for America. And we now have the feed going there for all the non-theist groups in the United States that we know about, the major ones like American Humanist Association and us, and it's becoming very popular. I mean, it's for people who really have to know everything that's going on in the secular movement. So we do have that website. 